So basically, long story short, Hu Tao doesn't need any HP uh, substats except her main stat artifact. You want that to be HP and then you want all of your substats to be crit rate and crit damage. For maximum damage for basically realistic rolls, which we're going to talk about, you're aiming for something like 90% crit rate, 180% crit damage, and this will result during your E skill for you to have something like a 3,726 attack and then 27 thousand HP so in this video we're going to go through the optimization and I'm going to go through the math as fast as I can but still try to be very detailed because I don't want everyone to sit here way too long so we're using the same formula as before we're considering it on Hu Tao and we're using it for her elemental burst her elemental burst is something like level 9, the multiplier is like 600%, you'll see it in the code. The purpose of this test, we're trying to find the optimal roles for the substats into a base build of Hu Tao considering her elemental skill HP scaling. So this is, her elemental skill gives you attack based on her HP, so we're taking that into consideration. These numbers are indicative of basically completely optimized builds with perfectly rolled substats, but not every single substat perfectly uh, rolled, if that makes sense. So we're only assuming that 20, like 50% of our substats rolled perfectly. The rest can actually be garbage. And I can make a video later on like the theoretical maximum build where every single substat will go into um, a favorable one and get like the complete theoretical max. But basically, Almost none of us is ever going to achieve that, so I don't think it really matters too much. Basically finding the maximum damage potential for the spear, and here we're considering the Homa, the spear of, or the staff of Homa, and we're assuming average values for the high and low rolls. So this is basically an optimization problem, and we're going to need four things for an optimization problem. We're going to be also basically finding the maximum of this uh, function and we're going to talk about that. So what we need is an objective function. So for us, that's going to be the damage um, formula. That is our objective function. Then we need to define constraints for it. We only have one main constraint and then there's bounds, which are kind of like constraints too, but that's effectively the region where we can have the variables go between. And then we're going to talk a little bit about the method that we're using here. So the objective function is the damage formula. It was in the Excel and it's up here at the top. Um, basically in yellow, I've got highlighted the variables and here I just simplified. You can uh, look through this and see if I made any mistakes. But in the red box, we can see the weighted average. Um, so that's basically weighting the non-crits with the crit rate or the non-crit rate and then the critical hits with the crit rate. Further simplifying the objective function, we can get it into a form where basically at the bottom here, um, we've got the damage and then there's two constants. There's C1 and C2. C2 is the base attack. C1 is literally everything else that doesn't matter. And then we've got four variables here. These are attack percent, flat attack, crit rate, and crit damage. Basically, Hu Tao's HP scaling is going to increase the flat attack, so that's going to go into this region here and then these other ones are going to be affected by substats. If we look down here, we can expand this formula even more. And in the blue, we're looking at the substat values being added. So the 0 0.0495, that is actually the average substat roll for attack percent. And then X is the number of favorable rolls that we get into it. Similarly, F is the number of favorable rolls going into flat attack and then R is the number of favorable rolls going into crit rate. In yellow, we've got our basically main stat values and we're gonna get a little bit more into that in the different cases that we consider. We're going to consider two main cases. One is Hu Tao with an attack percent ruin and then one is with uh, Hu Tao with a HP percent ruin. The other two would be crit rate and elemental bonus. So this is the obje objective function defined in Python. So basically at the beginning here, we can see the different um, variables and these are, or basically what you pass in, what, what I'm passing into the objective function is a dictionary. 
composed of six parts, which all contain the number of roles that went into each um, substat. And then based off of those, the program is going to optimize the high, like in order to get the highest um, value based off of these number of roles. So it's going to fiddle around with these variables in order to get the highest value. Here we're looking at the HP attack bonus elemental skill increase. Um, so I can get a little bit more into this, but I'm just going to quickly try to point things out. This is uh, Hu Tao's like uh, level six elemental skill pack increase multiplier. So it's 5.06%. This is the base HP. This is the HP substat rolls. This is the flat HP rolls. This is the flat um, HP from the flower. This is a conditional that's just checking if we've actually hit the max HP bonus cap. So the max bonus cap is four times the base attack and this is 400% of the base attack. Base attack is C2. We're going to see that in the code later on. This is just printing. This is the um, final kind of damage formula and we're going to look at that more in detail in other spots. So here we can see the constraints. So I basically wrote out a little table and this shows that just for the main stat here, these are the substats you can get and you cannot get the same substat for the same main stat. So what happens is um, the maximum number of rolls, including the first one that you get it with, is about five. Artifacts can also start off with three or four natural substats, so you could count that in. Um, so we're gonna talk about it later, but basically you can get something like 40 rolls in for five artifacts. Down here we can see uh, kind of the calculations I did for the um, average rolls. So this would be a high roll, this would be a low roll, and I just average them all out and I'm using these values. So here we're going to look at the constraints. So what were the first, basically the one and only big constraint that we have is that all of the rolls have to add up to a certain number. So we could say that all of the rolls are going to add up to the maximum number of rolls, which would be something like 40. You can get 40 from assuming every time you power up an artifact, you get a power up at level 4, 8, 12, 16, and 20. So that's 5 power ups. Each artifact gets 5 power ups. So we know that there has to be at least 25. Each artifact can also start with either 3 or 4 main stats or like substats. If it starts with 3 substats, then the total number of yeah, if it starts with three substats, then the total number of natural stats is 15. 15 plus 25 is 40, so it can be 40. It can be a little bit higher if you assume it can be like 45 if you assume that there's actually five sub, four natural substats. What we're going to do for this calculation, because I want to keep this realistic, and not everybody, honestly, almost nobody, is able to get crit rate and crit damage in the perfect ratio every single time. So we're only going to assume that 20 of the rolls are perfectly optimal. So that's why our constraint is going to be constrained to 20. Then we're going to put a high bound and a low bound in. A low bound doesn't really matter here. I was using this to just kind of show a point um, at the end, which we're going to see later. But the high bound is that we're going to assume that there's 20, each stat can roll 20 times. So if we go back, we can see here that crit damage can never show up on the crit damage uh, main stat artifact. And so for this one, it's basically, it can show up five times for four artifacts. So there's 20 rolls. If every single roll goes into it, then you can get 20 rolls. So that's why we're going to use 20. There is some uh, cases, for example, if you have a crit rate main stat artifact, then the crit damage ones can actually roll 25 times. And basically what you would do in this algorithm, you just change uh, one of these bounds that could be like the high bound and this would be the low bound. And you would put that 25 in for the bound for that variable. I didn't really do that and it does not make a really, really big difference. So you can rewrite the code if you want, but it's basically fine. So the method that we're using is the sequential least squares programming algorithm. I uh, don't know too much, I'm not too good at math, but basically there's a function, there's constraints, and there's bounds. 
and that's what we did. Then it does fancy stuff and uh, optimizes stuff. So basically, uh, I'm kind of covering it up here, but at the bottom here, you can see uh, the Python code that I was basically using. So it's from a SymPy library and I'm just calling the minimize function and we're passing it an objective function. X zero is kind of an initial vector or initial values in order to kind of get the algorithm going because it needs to have a starting point and then it'll probably start moving around until it finds the maximum or minimum. Here I'm just showing you that the method I'm using, I literally just write the name in and then Python is just beautiful and it takes complete care of it all by itself. Then I pass in the bounds and the constraints. All right, so here we can see some of the code. I'm just gonna scroll through it uh, very quickly. If you guys want, I can uh, make a video and go through it uh, slowly, but it's gonna take 10 or 15 minutes and I wanted to keep this one close to 15 or under 20 at least. So I'm just scrolling through it. You can go pause it and we're gonna just keep moving on even though I'd really like to talk about every single number. Now we can look at the results of basically the code. So assuming that we were using a HOMA with artifact main stats of crit rate, elemental bonus and attack percent, we can see at the bottom here. So here we can see the constants. This is a uh, kind of mumbo jumbo. This value, this is important here. This X array shows us where did the rolls go. So what we can see here is that when we've got an attack percent artifact, that crit rate is the second last value. We've got 16 rolls. So it's 1.6 and then times 10 to the power of one. So it's 16 rolls going into that. And then about four rolls going into crit damage. And what happens with this is that it optimizes the ratio here. And we can see this is about 90% and this is about 100, 180%. And that gives you that one to two ratio that I keep talking about, and it's really good. The uh, average optimized damage is 32.5K, and this is assuming that you're doing a burst, which it would hit, like it's AOE, it would hit a lot of people. It seems like a reasonable number. Now we're also assuming that basically there was no um, attack or flat or percent substats. So that's definitely, something that can show up and basically attack is never a favorable stat when you're optimizing it'll always want to go into crit rate and crit damage um, so it is I'd say a good stat if you have it it's not bad it will help you but it won't help you as much as crit rate and crit damage will here we can see the HP we're at 20k HP so if we remember 32.5k damage was with this combination. If we change the last um, artifact main stat from attack percent to HP, then it's pretty cool. What we can see is that the attack increases. It was 32.5 last time and now it's 33.9. So we do get a reasonably sized chunk being added in. The distribution of the stats is basically the same. It's like 16 into crit rate and 14 uh, four percent, no, four rolls into crit damage. The difference that we have here is that our total attack is higher and our total HP is higher. The total attack is higher because we're using the Homa and we're assuming the elemental skill is active. So based off of all of this HP, there's a massive attack buff coming into play here and just boosting the attack. That is basically why it's able to go into, uh, go into give a higher result. Now you might ask, what if I can't roll into crit rate and crit damage every time? Because, uh, you know, stuff happens. So what I did here to answer this question is that I introduced a different bound and I said, okay, say you do have bad artifacts, okay? And the maximum number of rolls that you can get into crit rate is five and the maximum number of rolls you can get into crit damage is also five. So we can see that here, the low bound goes from zero to five, and we put that in for crit rate and crit damage. Everything else can get 20 rolls. What do we see occur? So we see that basically here in the rolls, it maxes out the crit rate rolls and maxes out the crit damage rolls, both at five. Then the remaining 10, it has to choose between attack, flat attack, HP percent, and flat HP. And we can see that it puts all of them into HP percent. And 
the average optimized damage is 30,000 uh, damage, which is about you know 4,000 damage lower than when you do have your crit rate and crit damage optimized stats. We can see because it uh, it was forced, it was capped on the crit rate and the crit damage, it couldn't balance them out perfectly. We get stuck at 50% crit rate and then a lot of crit damage. So what this shows basically is that after crit rate and crit damage, the next stat that you do want to be going for is HP percent. In conclusion, you want to go for crit rate and crit damage in a one to two ratio. Literally, that's, that's all you want to pray and hope for that you get. You just want crit rate and you want crit damage. Otherwise, the next thing you want is HP percent substats. So if you get an HP percent substat, don't cry about it. It's, it's going to be pretty good. It's going to be the next best thing. After HP percent substats, it's probably going to be attack percent substats. And then flat ones after that. But the flat ones, as we can see at high levels, are not ideal. The stats uh, for Hu Tao and Homa, the highest value we were able to make in these two comparisons, assuming, you know, 20 favorable rolls, is a 90% crit rate and a crit damage of 180%. The attack is that, and then the attack is... 3,762, and then the HP is 27.5k. This should give a damage output of about 34,000 damage with a level 9 burst. Using uh, artifact main stats of crit rate, elemental bo bonus percent, and HP percent. If you like this video and there was not too much math, then I would really appreciate it if you uh, liked and subscribed. There's going to be more uh, Genshin math analysis now that we've actually got a good method for figuring out Hu Tao's effects. We're going to be able to compare all of her skills and because we do know how to optimize our next tier lists for spears and weapons are going to be much much better. So the next big video I'm going to make is uh, going to be which spear is best for Zhongli. So we're going to do a tier list for the Zhongli spears at 2.0 version of him with his buffs. If you'd like me to try live streaming summoning Xiao, leave a comment below. And I don't know, honestly, if one person asks for it, I'll go do it. But I'm sorry, this video was way too long. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.